Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial Functional Analysis Class Number 51. In this video, we prove a theorem. Let us see the statement of the theorem. The self-adjoint operators in B of H forms a closed linear subspace of B of H and therefore a real Banach space which contains the identity transformation. Let us see one by one. Let capital H be A, Hilbert space, and B of H. It also read as script B of H. B of H is the set of all continuous, set of all continuous linear transformations from H into H, from H into H. Right. Now define a set capital S. Now define capital S be the set of all self adjoint operators, set of all set self adjoint operators in B of H. In B of H. Capital S be the set of all self-adjoint operators. Capital S be the set of all self-adjoint operators. I repeat the definition of self-adjoint operator. An operator, an operator T is called self-adjoint if it satisfies the condition T star is equals to T. This is known as self-adjoint operator. So S is the set of all self-adjoint operators in script B of H. Our aim is to show that we have to prove that this capital S is this capital S is closed closed linear subspace of H closed linear subspace of H B of H I am not H script B of H and also a real Banach space I mean this S is real Banach space this S is real Banach space real Banach space which contains identity operator which contains identity operator we define that S be the set of all self adjoint operators in script B of H we are going to prove that this S is closed linear subspace and also real Banach space and also identity operator lies in S so we prove one by one uh, in the first phase we show that first of all first we show that s is non empty first we show that capital s is non empty to prove this consider consider an inner product x comma 0 star y x comma 0 star y which is equals to 0 into x comma y we know this property we know this property inner product of tx comma y is equals to x comma t star y by using this property this 0 star can be shifted to first term it becomes 0 okay right and then the same inner product is equals to 0 comma y inner product of 0 comma y is equals to 0 it can be written as inner product of x comma 0 y so therefore we show that inner product of x comma 0 star y is equals to inner product of x comma 0 y this condition shows us 0 star y is equals to 0 y where this y is not equals to 0 so obviously you get that 0 star is equals to 0 it means 0 star is equals to 0 means this 0 0 is self adjoint operator self adjoint operator if it is self adjoint operator then it must belongs to s because s is the set of all self adjoint operators so 0 belongs to s if 0 belongs to s then obviously s is non empty our first time also same First, we have to show that S is non-empty. So, we prove that S is non-empty. Next, we show that, next, we show that 
एस इज लीनियर नाउ वे प्रूव दट नाउ वे प्रूव दट कैपिटल एस इज लीनियर नाउ वे प्रूव दट कैपिटल एस इज लीनियर to prove that s is linear let us take let us take capital t comma u belongs to s and alpha comma beta are real scalars are real numbers real numbers so we are taking two elements that alpha comma beta are real numbers and t comma u belongs to s what is s s is the set of all self adjoint operators by the definition of self adjoint operators t star is equals to t and u star is equals to u and alpha comma beta are real numbers so alpha bar conjugate of alpha is alpha and beta bar conjugate of beta is beta now consider an inner product now consider an inner product in this uh, sorry not inner product now consider one uh, linear formation alpha t plus beta u whole star alpha t plus beta u whole star is equals to we know that there is a property we know that there is a property t1 plus t2 whole star is equals to t1 star plus t2 star by applying that alpha t plus beta u whole star is equals to alpha t whole star plus beta u whole star again it can be written as again there is a property i write the property here there is a property alpha t whole star is equals to alpha t whole star is equals to alpha bar into t star alpha bar into t star by applying this property to both the terms here you can write alpha bar t star plus beta bar u star and already we said that alpha comma beta are real numbers so alpha bar is equals to alpha using that condition here alpha t star plus beta u star we said that t comma u belongs to s therefore t star is equals to t and u star is equals to u so you can write it is alpha t plus alpha t plus beta u i'm sorry alpha t plus beta u <sighs> alpha t plus beta u therefore we show that therefore we show that alpha t plus beta u whole star beta u whole star is equals to alpha t plus beta u this is nothing but alpha t plus beta u is self adjoint operator if it is self adjoint operator then alpha t plus beta u belongs to s belongs to s therefore we show that we show that alpha comma beta belongs to s sorry not alpha beta every time i read the same t comma u belongs to s alpha comma beta are scalars alpha comma beta are scalars implies as alpha t plus beta u belongs to s this is nothing but the linear property therefore capital s is linear therefore capital s is linear that's it so therefore we show that capital s is a real linear real linear subspace real linear subspace of b of h of b of h next we have to show that s is closed now we prove that now we prove that capital s is closed i mean closed subspace 
it is equivalent to prove that it is equivalent to prove that to prove that s is closed it is equivalent to prove that the limit point of s contained in s the limit point of s the limit point of s contained in s the limit point of s contained in s so our aim is to show that s is closed it is equivalent to show that the limit point of s contained in s it means it means by definition s is closed so let us take capital a be the limit point of s let us take capital a be the limit point of s capital a be the limit point of s by definition of limit point since 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 my right is we are defining that capital a be the limit point of s so since i'm writing yes i'm sorry this is not s a since a is limit point of s a is limit point of s if a is limit point of s it means there exists a sequence there exists a sequence a n in capital s such that in capital s such that a n converges to a as n tends to infinity this is from by the definition of limit point of s a is limit point of s obviously there exists a sequence a n in capital s such that a n converges to a as n tends to infinity right now consider now consider norm a star minus a norm a star minus a can be written like this norm a star minus a n plus a n so they get cancelled again minus a n star plus a n minus a i think you understand this one i'm adding and subtracting minus a n plus a n minus a n star plus a n star they get cancelled so if you split the inner product it can be written like this if you split the inner product it can be written like this which is less than or equals to norm a star mm -hmm. minus a n plus norm a n minus a n star plus norm a n minus a norm a n minus a so again again which can be already we said that a n belongs to s so a n star is equals to a n so which implies as a n star minus a n is equals to zero applying this term this calculation here which is clearly less than or equals to norm a star minus a n plus norm a n minus a norm a n minus a <coughs> again which can be written as which can be written as norm a n minus a n star i'm sorry a star norm a n minus a star plus the second term this can be modified like this a n double star a n i'm sorry i'm going to write written like this not like this this is less than or equals to norm a star is replaced by a double star a star whole star a n is replaced by a n star plus plus norm norm a n star minus a norm a n star minus a because a n is a n star is equals to a n already we said that here 
an star is equals to an we are applying here so which is less than or equals to which is less than or equals to norm a minus an star norm an minus a star plus norm an star minus a again which is less than or equals to norm an star minus a which plus norm an star minus a because of we observe that norm minus of an is equals to norm an okay by applying this one here so which is less than or equals to which is less than or equals to norm an minus a plus norm an minus a because an star is equals to an which is less than or equals to again 2 into norm an minus a already we said that an converges to 0 an converges to a as n tends to infinity so this is 2 into 0 2 into 0 which is equals to 0 so in the left side we have norm in the left side we have norm a star minus a therefore we conclude that from here norm a star minus a less than or equals to 0 but always norm is positive norm a star minus a is greater than or equals to 0 then we conclude that norm a star minus a is equals to 0 which implies as a star is equals to a a star is equals to a means a star is a is self adjoint operator a is self adjoint operator means a belongs to s because s is the set of all self adjoint operators therefore limit point of s limit point of s lies in s lies in s therefore s is closed s is closed hence we show that hence we show that capital s is linear and closed subspace linear and closed subspace of script b of h of script b of h that's it now it is remaining to show that now it is remaining to show that s is a hill but uh, i mean complete complete normal linear space i mean banach space so since since capital h is a hilbert space capital h is a hilbert space which implies as the set of all linear transformation script b of h is a banach space already we proved that it is a banach space b of h is a banach space and every banach space is complete so script b of h is complete b of h is complete b of h is complete and what we have s is closed subspace of b of h s is closed subspace of b of h we know that every closed subspace of complete space is again complete every closed subspace of complete space is complete therefore capital s is complete therefore capital s is complete hence we prove that capital s is capital s is complete complete normed linear space complete normed linear space if capital S is complete normal linear space, what it means? Capital S is a Banach space. Capital S is a Banach space. Yes, this is the required one. And finally, you have to show that S contains the identity operator. To prove that S contains the identity operator, inner product of X comma I star Y can be written as I into x comma y inner product which is equals to x comma y it can be written as inner product of x comma i y because i is identity operator it means i y is equals to y so therefore we show that inner product of x comma i star y is equals to inner product of x comma i y which gives a result of i star y is equals to i y so y get cancelled on both sides because y not equals to 0 you simply write i star is equals to i i star i is equals to i means i is self adjoint operator 
every self adjoint operator lies in s so i belongs to s therefore we conclude that s contains s contains identity operator s contains identity operator hence hence final conclusion hence the set of the set of all self adjoint operators the set of all self adjoint operators in script b of h are simply b of h b of h forms forms a closed closed real linear subspace subspace of script b of h and it is complete complete normed linear space normed linear space it means it is a banach space it is a banach space and containing identity transformation containing identity transformation this this completes the proof hence proof in the next video we prove one more theorem depends upon the self adjoint operators this is also important theorem here keep learning so the set of all self adjoint operators forms a the set of all self adjoint operators forms a banach space forms a real banach space that's it